All right. Um, we had a lot of new products. So uh, these, there's permutations okay. of these. So right. you can talk about that. I'll just talk about these in general because it's going to be, they're basically there's all the same. Uh, so we have these silicone molds for making your own keycaps. Um, I really like the look of um, acrylic cast keycaps. Basically, you get uh, UV resin, I recommend. You can get two part resin, but I don't recommend it. Um, UV resin I found works much, much better. You just need a UV lamp to cure it. And then you can um, mix like glitter or color, or you can paint them or you can sculpt them. Um, so these molds are there to help you with that process and they come in a variety of different sizes. So each one of them has four, at least, I mean, at least these two, they have four um, one U keycaps. These are kind of the standard keycaps. And then there's an extra key for like all the different, like not exact one U, so there's one point. 25U and 1.5U and 1.75 and 2. So like the alt and escape and caps lock, whatever. There's there's a variety of them. Um, yeah, I kind of wish they would have had like a mold that has one of each, but that's just not how it worked. And space bar and, and these really long keys is also separate. Um, but between these, you know, you can find all the key caps you want. Maybe you only want to make some one U keys. Um, we're going to have a guide and uh, video on how to use these. We're going to have um, some, some good tutorials on that. Yeah. Uh, however, for now, I've, I've linked in the product page to a great YouTube tutorial. Um, but basically, my tips are, yes, these are reusable. Um, you really do want to use UV curing um, resin, even though it's a little bit more expensive. Don't put too much stuff in the resin or it won't cure. Like, you want to make sure that's clear enough for the UV light to shine all the way through because uh, the UV light itself is what cures it. Um, and it's actually kind of fun. You just like design your own keycaps um, and they will snap onto any MX uh, compatible switches. Oh, and then you also, the only other tip I have is um, when you put the top, the, the part that fits on top that has the stem, um, just make sure it's nicely centered because there's nothing keeping it centered. So you have to kind of visually center it. Um, but you know, if you cure it two minutes later, you pop it out and then you can just keep reusing and remaking uh, the molds as many times as you like. Yeah, um, one fun thing you can do if you have like extra little electronic components, those look really good inside. Yeah, of I made one where I put like I put like broken chips. Yeah, and we stuff. put an RP twenty forty in it. Yeah. And um, the other thing is, this is a fun uh, continuation of things you can do with your macro pad. Yes. Because that's what we have. Of for. course. All right, next up. All right, by request, we've had the two pin version of these quick wire joints. This is the three pin version. I'll show this on the overhead real fast because it's it's m mostly a visual explanation. Um, e inside, whoa, so close. Yeah. Too close, too close. E inside, um, each one of these is a, hold on, um, a little spring. And when you press down, it opens the spring and you see you can then fit a wire inside of it. And so these are, you know, we have like uh, clampy style or um, crimp style connectors. But these are great if you're like, you're just a maker or you know, you're just, you're just doing a project and you want to quickly connect some wires together and you don't mind that this is a little bit chunky, you can bolt it down. Um, but here's the thing, it's just really easy to use and it's very friendly. Um, but of course it's not waterproof or weatherproof. It's good for just like crafting together some projects. Um, you can use it with stranded or solid co coil core wire. We have the two pin version and then people are like, we want the three pin version. We now have the three pin version. Next up. All right, next up, some diodes. Uh, people making keyboards and macro pads and stuff. Um, a lot of projects have diodes in them because they're diode matrixed. And so people were like, hey, you have, SM you have through hole diodes. Can you stock SMT diodes? So here you go. It is 100 SOD 123, 1N4148 signal diodes. Um, if you're putting together a PCB with um, some of our keyboard stuff, oftentimes the only things you need are the keyboard you know, uh, PCB, which you get made, the switches and or sockets, which we stock, and now diodes. Next up. Next up, we've got chalk switch sockets. So um, these go with the slim chalk switches, which I'm going to show in a moment. These are SMT sockets that you would solder onto your PCB, and then it allows you to uh, snap in and, you know, remove and replace without soldering uh, kale chalk chocolate style switches. So these look a lot like the MX sockets, which I'll, maybe I'll show real fast what those look like, because these are, and these are not the chalk ones, these are the um, MX ones, but they look very similar. So you see here, this is like surface mount soldered on, 
And then on the opposite side, you have a switch and then you can mechanically connect and disconnect it and it's nice and solid when it's plugged in, but you can also remove it and replace it. So good for people who like, they don't know if they want linear or clicky or like super clicky um, switches. Um, however, the chalk switches, which look like this, have different pinouts than the MX switches. And so you'll need these sockets for chocolate and they're not cross compatible with MX, totally different pinout. Okay, next up. Okay, speaking of chalk switches, uh, here are some chalk switches. So we've got two, we've got uh, linear red and we've got clicky white um, and they're very similar. These are an alternative to Cherry MX compatible switches. I will say that they're harder to use because they are not compatible in almost any way. You can't use the same PCB layout. They have the pins are slightly different. You cannot use the same sockets because the pin is slightly different. You cannot use the same keycaps because they're slightly different. So yeah, let me go to the overhead and I'll compare. Okay, so this is a Cherry MX compatible switch is what they look like. They're kind of uh, um, boxy, right? And you've got the stem and the stem has this cross shape to it in the center and you put the um, key cap on top. Key caps look like this. They have the cross, it fits on. And um, there's the centering peg that um, you know orients it and then there's the two pins. Compared to uh, the chalk switch, which I'll tilt, you can see the pins are in different locations. The, the overall width and height are the same but the pins are in different locations, so you cannot use the sockets or the same PCB layout. Um, they are much, much slimmer, which is why people like these. You can see they're like a half the height of, maybe even less, a third of the height of MXs, um, because the switch goes to the side. It doesn't go up and down. And then you can see the, um, the uh, key switch top is also different. It has sort of this like uh, plug, you know, two, two pin plug rather than a uh, square plus shape. So you cannot use the same keycaps either. That said, you want a slim switch. This is the only thing you can use because these are, these MXs, these are the standard size. So you'd have to go with these um, chuck switches to do that. And uh, this is the clicky one and this is the linear one. So you have one of each, linear and clicky. Uh, they're more expensive, they're harder to use. But, you know, they're good slim. They're nice, right? You want something low profile. This is what you're going to get. All right. Next up. I think we're up to... Uh, you got the switches. We have those. Now. We got yeah. these. We, so we these. just did those chalk these, switches. These. You got these. You okay. Got these. Now we're back in MX line. A lot of key switches came in today, you can tell, from, from Kale. Um, so these are the Jade uh, Thick Clicks. This is, I think, a, no a Novel Keys and Kale collaboration. We purchased these from Kale. Um, so there's jade and there's navy. Yeah. Um, and both of these are, they're Cherry MX this compatible. One. Yeah. And they're both like really clicky. So if you're like, I want so clicky that it's like people are annoyed. It's yeah. really, really clicky. So I'll show them. So these are by request. These are a little bit too clicky for me. I don't know if I would put them on a really? keyboard. Maybe I'd put them on a macro pad. Oh yeah, like they're like here. Feel these, feel these. Just, just press them. Just press them. What do you think? Really clicky, right? Yeah, this is this is in the fidget category. Like you know those little fidget things where yeah. you're, like you just do that because you're like nervous. Okay. Um. So clicky. Uh, so these are um, the kale and sorry, the kale navy and jade box thick clicks. Sometimes they're called or just super clickies. Okay. Okay. Let's keep moving. Next up, we are now up to some electronics. Okay, we've got for uh, Spresence. Um, if you are using the Sony Spresence and you want to add Wi-Fi, here's a Wi-Fi add-on. Um, we're carrying this because there's a lot of people who are about to take a class with the Spresence for machine learning and the Wi-Fi module is part of them. Um, it's by IDY. It's, a, it's an approved accessory for Sony. Um, and it adds uh, Wi-Fi capability to your Sony Spresence. Okay. We also have uh, this little sensor module, which adds a variety of sensors. You can see uh, barometric pressure and temperature, I think humidity. Um, you've got uh, motion, accelerometer, magnetometer, all that good stuff. Uh, probably all over I2C. Uh, plug it into your Sony's presence. And again, you can use uh, the machine learning code in this uh, 
tutorial class um, or the Arduino code that's provided to um, get sensor data into your Sony's presence board. All right. What else? Um, okay. Next up, we've got um, super high density um, LED matrix. So this is like a, just so adorable. Did you get the demo? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. So um, it's a 32 by 64 matrix, but it's just so small. Hold on, I gotta get my plug. You know, while you're doing this, someone was suggesting we do 12 packs because the macro pad has 12 packs. I know. But it, do, we have the hot dog bun problem, right? Yeah, let someone me tell said you. you just have to buy nine ma macro pads. Yeah, basically <laughs> the problem is, is that there's never a number because there'll be other yeah. devices. Oh, wow, that screen, that thing's really nice. That is really nice. It's Sorry. very, it's very <laughs> Sorry, everybody, I'm distracted now because this yeah, is we're doing You should see this in person. Um, so this is. Uh, ultra high density, so it's 2.5 millimeter pitch. So it's it's like the kind of size of like a large candy bar. That even looks good. You know, sometimes it's really hard to have like live video coming out of these things, especially with like overheads and yeah. all this. This looks even good on that. Yeah, and um, this, uh, yeah, I'm just using it. I'm driving it with a feather and our, our feather wing that plugs into the back. So this is our. I even have a little note to tell me it's the 32 by 64 demo. Um, so this is like the smallest 32 by 64 matrix um, I could find. There's only one little thing to watch out for. The green and blue LEDs are swapped. So when you define the pins for this, just any pin that's green and blue, just swap them. Like it, nothing really changes in the, the code. Def like the code library itself doesn't change, but what pin you select will be different. I, I don't know why it is because every one, every other one of our matrices doesn't have green and blue swap, but it could be just because of um, the difficulty of routing such a tightly packed board because these are two millimeter LEDs packed like basically one next to each other with no space in between. It could be that they couldn't route it without having green and blue swaps. So just be aware, you, you turn it on, you're like, it's not working. Uh -huh. Whatever your pin definitions are, just swap the green and blue pins and you're good to go. Okay, uh, next up, really good news. These are now in stock. Um, yes. Y'all wanted some Adafruit keycaps. This is one of the only times where we put our logo on something. It is rare for us to do it. Not going to be a lot of stuff. We don't do like shot glasses or you know, even shirts really. Um, but this we thought um, is kind of special and unique, and um, it looks cool. I mean, front logo is great for a keycap because it's like got that monochromatic nice. look. And so these uh, are in stock. We've already announced them, but yeah, now they're just they're in stock, stock now. Then um, the star of the show. This is the um, open source hardware logo, the community design logo. And it's now a keycap. Yeah. Uh, we post up the files we made with, uh, for this to try to keep it as you know open source hardware. Uh, quick review of where this logo came from, so folks know, and you can look at my article about it. A million years ago, I designed a logo, flash enabled, and it later turned into the OSI lo logo, and that was later used as a reference for the community-driven one. I have a chart. I have all these things. Collect them all. But now you can have the keycap. Um, you see this on boards and things, but now you can you can have an open source hardware keyboard and an open source hardware key. And um, you're probably wondering, well, isn't there like an open source hardware association that have a different logo, but isn't there one? And like, wouldn't it be great if you donated money to them? We do. Not only do we support the summit, but the organization, but we're gonna take some of the sales from this and use that to donate to Oshawa. So that is new parts for this week. Wait, we have to show the overhead. Oh, you want to show the overhead? Okay. Yeah, um, wait, wait, you had to do you your rant. So it wasn't a rant. Well, sorry, your presentation. Yeah. Okay, so um, this is the Adafruit key. Uh, this is the open uh, sort of hardware logo. And then this is the uh, special edition, not going to be sold uh, Hackaday's. You know, we made one just for us. Um, and you can just see it glows through. So this is great if you have an RGB keyboard with a, you know, back LED or even just a single LED, um, you know, it'll glow and it glows nicely even if, even though the LEDs, of course, uh, on these keys are um, on the north side only, uh, it'll kind of bleed through and it'll kind of make a nice gradient effect. So it looks, it looks quite good even in person. Um, and then when off, you can still see it. It's just uh, white instead of colorful. Okay, uh, that is new products. All right, now we're going to new products.